Hey guys, in the last video we talked about creating a one-click debug experience and something I didn't mention in that video was how to do logging in Django. And I think that's a great addition, so that's what we're going to talk about today. If you read the official Django, and, and sort of like the reason why I created this video is if you read the official Django documentation, their logging example is really intense. At least this kind of gives me a headache of there's this single logging variable and a whole lot of di um, dictionary key value pairs going on in here. So what I did in my configuration is I've sort of like reverse engineered this um, logging dictionary and I've separated it so the format formatters, handlers, and loggers are actually in separate variables that get referenced. And I, and I think this makes more sense for my brain. Hopefully it makes more sense for your brain as well. And Whenever we're talking about logging, there are a few different players to talk about, and that's <laughs> language from the Django documentation. And they mentioned that the, the four important ones are loggers, handlers, filters, and formatters. Now, I'm not gonna talk about filters because I don't currently use them. So we're just gonna talk about loggers, handlers, and formatters. And that's what we have here, the formatters, handlers, and loggers. So we'll first talk about the loggers. So this logging um, key is referencing this loggers um, up here. So we'll jump to this one and I've defined two different loggers. One is um, Django, which is called Django and the other one's called Django request. So the Django logger is logging everything that is of info or higher and Django request is logging everything that is warning or higher. So if we go back to the doc, there are um, like five or six different levels. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five different levels. And so basically one of my loggers is logging everything that's at the info or higher, and then another is logging at warning or higher. And naturally, um, these loggers are always tied to one or more handlers, and the handlers are really deciding what to do with the log messages. So the loggers are kind of logging away, and then the handlers are deciding what to do with the logs. Um, there's some really great like logging metaphors here that we could easily use. So there's these loggers that are creating the logs and then there's handlers that are handling the logs. Um, I've set in my Django logger that it is using the console handler and the my handler detailed. And then Django request is using the my handler. So, um, We'll talk about uh, handlers next. So we have three different handlers and the my handler and my handler detailed are actually writing to a file. And these two files are inside my logs, um, logs folder. And we can take a quick look at those. We have the blog the data dot log, which is logging, which is getting everything that is warning or higher. And in my blog, the data detailed log, that's naturally getting more logs because it's doing everything that's info or higher. So, um, yeah. And let's kind of walk through some of these um, key values. The file name is where the log is going to be written. Um, we want it to append, and this just means when I restart my server or start my server back up, if the file is still there, I just want to append to the end of it and not just delete and start over from the beginning. Um, encoding, pretty straightforward. This last part here is talking about the number of files to keep and then how large those files can get. So if, if I had a really, really active application, as blog the data detailed.log got larger and larger, once it reached five megabytes, it would become blog the data detailed.log, and then a new file would get created called, I think it would be like blog the data detailed log one, log two, log three, log four. And then once it hits the fifth file, it starts deleting the old one. So by having this backup count and max bytes, we're saying, keep a maximum of five files that are five megabytes and keep rotating those. So keep dropping off the oldest file um, and just kind of 
keep chugging through them and five megabytes is huge for even a single log file so this should have you backups for months and months if not years and similarly i have the exact same thing for my handler detailed and the only difference between my handler and my handler detailed is that they're writing two different files and and just like I mentioned earlier, these handlers are being um, referenced from the loggers. So this first logger is saying, I log everything with info and I send them to these two handlers. And then this one's saying, I log everything with warning and I send it to this handler. Okay, so I've talked about these two handlers and now this first one is pretty interesting. And this is the logger that uh, determines everything that gets sent to your console. And that's everything that shows up in here if you're in Visual Studio Code or using another IDE. And it's not written to a file. And this is really useful if you're just kind of monitoring your application and you just want to be seeing logs come through or you want to do some kind of in the moment um, debugging, super useful. And you just want to make sure that you are writing to a file as well. That way you can retrospectively look at your logs. Whereas this one is just purely streaming it into your console and you're going to lose it when you um, close down your editor. All right, so we talked about loggers and we talked about handlers. The third aspect is talking about formatters. So every handler gets a formatter and a formatter is saying, okay, so we've got these logs and they're being, you know, spit out. And then we've got these handlers that are deciding whether the logs go to the console or go to a file. Now the formatter is determining how did those logs look in the file or how do they look when they're printed out to the console? And I've set those formatters in another um, variable called formatters that um, kind of as I referenced earlier, I'm referencing it inside this, this main logging variable. And I have two formatters. There's a verbose formatter, format and a simple format. Um, I'm using the verbose format as a as one that's being written to the detailed log. I most of the time when I'm debugging or looking at logs, I don't necessarily care what the thread name is or the process ID. I just simply want to know, oh, like oh, that was a 404. Oh, um, you know, that was a 500. I just kind of want basic information, and that's what I'm using in my simple. But for the verbose, it can be quite useful to have all that information in a file for you to really dig through like gnarly issues. So um, the, the first kind of tricky aspect of this is how do we format our formatters? And if you go to the, the logging documentation for Python, I'm just in docs.python.org, they talk about all the different attributes that you can add to your log. And there's like line number, and that will talk about, you know, what line of code actually um, called the logger and you know what time was it logged at uh, file name just all kinds of information and that's what I referenced here and the tricky part for me too was this format they're using here is um, kind of a different format or maybe even an older format that you can actually use this curly brace syntax and instead of doing like let's look at um, this time here, you know how they use this little present sign and then they put this in parentheses with an S at the end. You can actually just put in the formatter label and then a colon and then the, um, the S like that. So you can follow this format instead of the format that you see in the documentation. And so for, um, maybe I should just kind of show you guys this working first. Um, that would be pretty useful. So let's do it. All right, let's press on my magical play button. And as this is happening, a um, new browser window is being opened. And let's put it over here. Sometimes it gets confused on where it is. So let me just help it out a little bit. And here we are. So we have, um, I've just launched my website and or getting logs coming through. And let's kind of take a look at what's happening right now. So we're having all these logs being sent to the console and that is going to be our stream handler that's, that's doing that. 
And this, if we look at our stream handler, we notice it's using the formatter simple. And formatter simple says the level name, which would be like info, warning, critical, the time that it's logged. Um, oh, whoops, I'm reading this one. So the level name, the time it's being logged, this is the module that the log is coming from. And then kind of the file name, um, line number, if appropriate, of where the log is coming from, um, the function name, and the message. And this is the message right here. And similarly, if we go to our log file, um, if we go into our detailed log, um, we'll see them right here and we're getting more. So we'll, let's see, we're on line 38. So let's go to like my life advice category. And then here we go. We got another line here inside the blog, the data detailed log. And it's saying, yep, he went to the life advice category and that was a 200. And we can also see that, yes, it's showing up here. Um, I visited the life advice category and I got a 200. But you'll notice that we're not going to see anything in, in the blog the data dot log because it's only logging warnings. But if we go in here and, you know, I type in something um, random, like this is not a real URL and I, I get a 404, then yes, I'm now getting a 404 that that page could not be found. If I go into my detailed log, I will, um, I should also see it. Yep, here's the warning. So we're seeing that the detailed log is getting the warning. The, um, the blog, the data dot log is also getting the warning, but it's not getting any of the infos because that's how we set it up. And likewise, um, this detailed log is getting the really, um, kind of intense um, log with the thread names and the process IDs, whereas in my console, I'm not getting that information and that's all being set up by the formatters. So that's basically it. Once you set up these formatters, like one or more formats, and then you wanna set up your handlers, which will determine either what's being sent to the console, if you're using a console handler, or what's being written to a file, which will be your additional handlers. And then inside your loggers, you reference these handlers. Um, we're, we're logging everything from info to the console and to that blog the data detailed log. And then we're logging everything that's warning to that just blog the data dot log, which is um, my handler is going to blog the data dot log. Finally, you put it all together in this logging variable and you're good to go. So now you have a um, Visual Studio Code instance. You're able to navigate to different pages and you see those logs show up in your console. I hope that was useful and have a fun day.